Many of you may think back to being 16 years old. You have your whole life planned. You've got everything figured out. And then just like that, in one moment, everything changes. The number one question is, am I going to be able to hunt again and shoot again? The first year or so is the hardest because you're also learning how to live again. You want to know, is my life over? Am I going to be able to do anything? When I say that I found a lot of healing in the outdoors, or I'm even honest enough to say that it saved my life, I'm not saying that facetiously. It's the truth. At the end of the day, I know for a fact that if I had not gotten outdoors and gotten involved in the outdoors, that I would not be here. The important thing for me was to be able to at least do one thing that I love to do, which was do stuff in the outdoors. And once I figured that out, learning how to live was so much easier. And everything in the outdoors is the same game I discovered. It, nothing changed but me. A lot of people used to ask me, you know, what would make it worth it? If you could go back and change your accident, would you? And I, and I always try to tell them, if you can make a difference in one person's life, then it does make it all worth it. You can look back and say, maybe that's why that happened. And so if Chad and I doing this show can really just reach even one person, and they can get outdoors and find healing, and they can get outdoors and find a new adventure, that's going to make it all worth it. picked out a couple of locations for blinds and now we're gonna brush them up this evening since we're hunting in the morning just kind of getting the lay of the land getting ready for DJ DJ's he's in a power chair so we need a little we need a little bit bigger blind to set up so we're just gonna brush it in get ready for the morning one of the main reasons we're starting Able Outdoors is to show how we do everything in the outdoors what equipment you're gonna need and I've always wanted to reach as many people as we can. What if there was an opportunity to use this accident, what some people might look at as a tragedy, and kind of turn it around and use it as an opportunity, as a platform to then help other people? I was blessed enough to go through the rehab at Tier Hospital. When I got out, I was the only one they knew of that was in the outdoors and hunting and fishing, and they would call me back in to visit new patients that were coming in asking them about that. And so that kind of set me on a path of helping others get back in the outdoors too, which really that, that started Able Outdoors, the idea of it 30 years ago. Get DJ in the blind in the spot where he can see. He's gonna be able to shoot. He's got a special gun rig. I met DJ three years ago. He was at Tier. He had just gotten injured, and they they call me in. I'm part of a mentor program called the Tier Peers, and they call me in for either somebody with a similar injury or similar interests. And DJ was one of my patients that I showed up for because he wanted to know about hunting of course. He's a little higher break than mine. I think he's in the C5 area which means he's more impaired upper body. He, he was main, mainly wanting to know how am I going to be able to shoot again? Am I going to be able to hunt? Am I going to be able to get outdoors? Basically went in there and said yes, yes, and yes. Right. I need the right. 
I need it to the left. The front. Is that right? Can you see it that way? Oh yeah. If he gets on this hand, decoy, I can get him. Where? If he gets on this hand. Oh, they're back there too far. Which one you on? They're too far to the right when you on. That's right, wait, that's our first trial run there. I need to be sitting over there on your left side so I can help you aim. Next time, next time we'll get it done. I knew I was gonna have to do that. It was beautiful, I was. My heart's beating off my chest right now. Never seen nothing like that in my life. Gorgeous, absolutely beautiful. I was excited too, buddy. While all that was going on with DJ, while we were in the blind, Ashley and Addison were on their way here from Wyoming, and they went out with Joe to the blind. Joe was going to be their guide while we tried to help DJ get his bird that afternoon. This is what I use to be able to hunt. Uh, this pole right here stabilizes to the ground. It's a final rest, dead rest, and uh, it attaches to my chair. It's got several different swivels on it, so I can get it right in here where I need her. And uh, it's what keeps me able to keep doing what I, what I love to do. Got the AC on? Can you turn the AC on, please? Feeling much better now. We got a cool rag on me. Got the shirt busted open. Some water. I was just overheating my. My body doesn't sweat, so it, there's a lot of heat held in. And then I got a binder, which helps keep my blood pressure up. So that just intensifies it that much more. But I'm feeling better, slowly coming back, slowly but surely. But it's been rough. It don't feel good. People want to know about my accident, about what happened to me. That's like the number one question. On August 2nd, 1999, it was a Monday morning. We were actually getting ready to leave on a big backpack trip. And so we had to take care of the horses before we left. And so I remember waking up in the bunkhouse and swinging my legs out of the bunk and heading down to the lower corrals where we kept some animals there. 1986, I dove into a pool. It's not a very good story. I hit the bottom. It was pretty deep. I just hit it just right fractured my neck at C7 level, which makes me a quadriplegic. 
and I climbed up on a hay rack, which is just a big log table that keeps the hay off the ground so the animals can't get to it. Then I cut open a bale of hay, and as often happens, one of the flakes on that bale of hay kind of fell off to the side. And so I grabbed the pitchfork that I had been using, and I leaned over to get that flake of hay, and as I did that, I started to lose my balance, and I started to fall. And the last thing I remember thinking was throw the pitchfork. Unfortunately, what happened is as I fell, I hit my head and so it kind of knocked me out farther. And so the pitchfork landed on the ground and then my back landed crossways on the wooden handle. And two weeks later, I was having surgery to stabilize my neck, went straight to the rehab. You know, there's always those, those dark times that you don't talk about as much where you're questioning if anything is really worth it and you need to have something to look forward to. Um, and, and like Chad always says, you know, it's, it's an even playing ground when you get outdoors. The outdoors does not care that you have a disability. The outdoors does not care that it's a little bit more difficult for you because of that disability. It's hard for everybody. And so I was really glad when he called and talked about this opportunity. I love the fact that we're representing um, men and women in the outdoors. I love the fact that, you know, Chad was hunting before his accident. I didn't start hunting until after my accident. And then on this initial trip, I got to bring my daughter along. And so that's a whole nother aspect of it that people are always curious about and always ask me about what that's like to be a parent with a disability. This is the first time that my 10 year old daughter, Addison, is actually the hunter behind the bow. This is the first time that we've actually hunted with the Crossman Air Bow. It's not legal in Wyoming to hunt with. So we've shot it at targets before, but never a live animal. So we're out this morning looking for a second chance for Addison. She missed yesterday, which is obviously all part of hunting. But we were gonna be filming with DJ this morning and he decided to make the call to stay back at the hotel, which is really good that he's able to judge enough about his physical abilities to know when it's okay to stay back. Looking for turkeys and haven't seen a living creature except for a bird. The wrong kind of bird. Yeah, the wrong kind of bird. <laughs> if I get a turkey tonight, I can't sleep in tomorrow. And what about if you don't get a turkey? I have to sleep in the blind. <laughs> we'll leave you some gummy bears, you'll be fine. I think one of the most important things for starting Able Outdoors is to tell people that there's a place in the outdoors for everybody. Show them that if they want to do it, they can do it. There's just also a lot of peace to be found. It's the one place where you can sit and just enjoy being. You don't have to worry about your medication schedule or what you have to run over here and do and get distracted by everything else. You can just be. A place to get out. It's being in camp, being around the fire at night, cooking wild game. Again, when I say I find healing and when I say the outdoors saved my life, it legitimately did. So if you're watching this and you don't think you can do something, you get in touch with me or Ashley and you get in touch with us and we're gonna help you any way we can. We'll get you back out there. <laughs>